So this review is really done out of necessity for me. My 12 inch fry pan is a hot mess. Handles jiggle, it's all scratched up. It just doesn't do what I need it to do anymore. You know what? It's even too embarrassing to show here on YouTube. Or is it? Nah, I'll show it to you. Look at this thing. Handles jiggle, this handle jiggles, it's all scratched up. It's served its life and it served it well, but I need something else. And I do screw those handles down about once a week and they still loosen up. So I need something else. Today, we're gonna be looking at the hex clad. It's a hybrid new fry pan design. I'm looking forward to it. I got the 12 inch one, like I said. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews For You. And my channel is dedicated to reviewing mostly as seen on TV items. I look at some consumer gadgets, other household items. Once in a while, I do a little bit of a DIY just because I like to. If that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click that bell so you're notified every time I release a video just like this one. Now, whoa, let's take a closer look at the hex clad to see if it's any good. It's time to unbox the hex clad fry pan. This is the 12 inch version. It was purchased for $129. So let's see what 129 bucks get for us. All right, for, ooh, what's this? It's, it's in a bag. How cool is that? All right, so right here we have our directions that I will read later and let you know about. And then check this out. It comes in its own bag. That is fancy. All right, opening it up. Wow, look at that pattern. That is super, super sweet. That's your hex clad design. It continues on the back. That's cool. What I will tell you is this is a very heavy pan. I did not expect it to be this weight, um, but that is pretty sweet. All right, so the hex clad design, this pan actually has a layer of stainless on the bottom. And then it mixes with a, a layer of aluminum and then another layer of stainless, and plus it has this non-stick gridded in there, um, and it is bumpy, so you have like maybe a little lift, and they say that creates some pockets for non-stick. This is pretty, pretty sweet. I did purchase the lid to go with it. I think it was an extra 40 bucks or so. It's not required, but I figured I would need a lid for the pan. Um, they do have some directions. First off, you're supposed to wash this with soap and water, and then you are supposed to put it through a little seasoning process. So that is what we're gonna do now. First step, we're gonna be washing this with some warm soapy water, just to clean off anything that might've been there from the factory. Um, after this, we dry it and then season it. So make sure you wash it thoroughly with warm soapy water. Instructions for seasoning tell you to turn on the stove top. You want to put it on like a medium to low heat. So I have one through six, so I'm putting it in between two and four. So you want to wait for this to heat up just a little bit, and then you're going to add a teaspoon of vegetable oil. Once you have that in, you're going to rock the pan and make sure it gets all over. Then you let it sit for another one or so minutes. Um, they say one to two, and then you are ready. So here we have starting the process. The pan is heated up, so we're going to add our oil where that you're supposed to spread it around. They actually say, make sure you get it all around the pan um, so it gets all the different surfaces on it. So just do that the best we can. And then you're going to end up leaving this on the heat for another minute or two. They say one to two minutes, but I think we got most of it covered here. But this is how we're seasoning it. And they do say over time, as you cook with it, it's going to re-season itself. But now just another minute or so, you leave it on, and then you wipe it off, and you're ready to cook. I have the stove top on, and the pan has been heating. It's on medium-low, just like before. They say when you know you're ready to cook is when you dribble a little water on here, and they start to dance and sizzle. So therefore, we know we're ready to cook. Um, their recommendation when doing eggs is put a little bit of oil or spray butter or spray pan just to cover the surface. They say the fat in the oil helps out with the egg, um, so we'll do that, plus it makes it taste better. So let's try what they did. 
Now I've said this before, I am not a cooking channel, but I do love to try to demonstrate all the things that we see on TV um, and the cooking. Let's see if we can get it everywhere. Oh, well, a little bit missed, but that's okay. And so what we'll do now is we'll just let that cook for a little bit. I want to talk about the pan as we're doing this. Um, they say that this surface is so tough and so strong, you can use metal on it and it won't even bother it. That is kind of cool because there's a lot of times when I'm cooking on here and I'd like to cut right on the pan. And now they're telling me that I'm actually able to do that. So here we have our egg cooking. What I'm going to do is I'll try to check the edges a little bit. It looks like it's uh, it's cooking pretty good. That's moving. Seems to be non-stick. There is one thing that they said on their infomercial, and they actually did on the infomercial, that I'm going to try to replicate right here. And that's actually blowing the egg off the pan onto a plate. Think we can do it? All right. Let's set this up. Are you ready? Get set. Go. Did you see that? That was pretty sweet. And the egg doesn't look so bad either. We did a good job on those eggs. Can you believe I went, and the egg just came right off? I didn't actually think it was going to do that. Let's go now and test something for lunch with cheese and tortillas. Now we're gonna make a favorite here in the Jeff Reviews for You house. This is gonna be a quesadilla. Check the temperature of the pan. Can you hear that sizzle? I'm sprinkling some water on there. Um, what they recommend, again, we're on medium low heat. We're just gonna sprinkle some cheese on there. Just enough to move it around. We're gonna take our tortilla, put it on top of there. Turn it around a little bit, and I'm supposed to be able to pick up all that cheese. Oh, well, maybe I didn't pick up all that cheese, but it's still on the pan. Um, I guess we'll still cook it. Oh, well, that's a shame. On the infomercial, all the cheese came off the pan, and then he made the quesadilla. On mine, only part of it did. I'm going to have to scrape that off later. At least it's not sticking, but it also didn't cook very well. That makes me sad. But we must go on. So what I'm going to try to do now is they show you cutting this right on the fry pan with a pizza cutter. All right, let's try it. Ready? Cut. Cut. There we go. Well, it did cook it. I was able to cut it. I'm going to be interested to know if I scratched it. Doesn't, doesn't look like any scratch marks, so that's nice. So this one I say 50-50. Cooked it, it cut it, but the cheese definitely didn't come off like it was supposed to initially. Kind of disappointing. And just for you skeptics out there, I tried it three times off camera, two of them because I wanted to see if it was really me or the pan. And it happened the same way every single time cheese got stuck. I did scrape it off with a metal scraper or a metal spatula, and it didn't seem to harm the finish, so that was good. And it cleaned up real nice. The quesadillas were still good. Anyway, now I love steak. I love how they do it in the restaurants where they pan sear it, maybe sprinkle a little butter on it as you're cooking it, and flip it, and then pop it in the oven. That's what we're gonna try next. I have the temperature of the oven set at 275. Let's check our pan to see if we're good to go. Looks nice and warm to me. All right, so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here and spread that around the pan before I apply my steak and butter. Um, just a little bit. Maybe that was a little more than I wanted, but it's okay. Just spread it around, now it's good. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my steak. And I'm going to put it um, in the pan, but I'm going to try to press it down so it's away from me. So I don't want to get any splatter back. So I'm going to do two pieces. I'm going to use some rosemary some time. I am going to do like a, a butter bath. I 
I put some pads of butter in there. I'm just trying to get a nice sear on the one side. If, if you were here, you could smell the aromas that are going on. It smells wonderful. Just going to let that butter start to melt. Push my steak a little bit. What I'm going to do here is just get some of this butter, sprinkle it on top as it's, uh, as it's cooking. Makes it extra, extra delicious. I'm going to be checking the bottoms. Just to make sure I'm getting the sear that I want. Uh, it's getting there. I will flip it and do the same thing on the other side. I should have said this, but what I did at the beginning was to prepare the steaks, I just used uh, Himalayan sea salt and crushed black pepper. Um, what I'm getting ready now to do is I'm getting ready to turn them. Let's see what they look like. So they're getting seared nicely. Now I'll sear on this side. And I'm going to add some more butter um, so I can get this side treated real nice too. And in just a little while, we're going to use a temperature probe and insert it in probably the bigger of the two to make sure we get to about 150 which would be a medium range i would love to hear from you what are your thoughts of this hex clad pan is this something that you need in your house do you have one of these let me know down in the comment section below i would love to hear from you I'm getting to the point where I'm going to be putting this in the oven. I do have the um, stove top up to about a four, which is a little over half because when you're searing this, you want to make sure it's a little higher than a low to medium heat. Um, I've just been, just been putting the butter on like this. In just a minute, I'm actually going to put the probe in and drop it in the oven until we get to our temperature. Let's see what the bottom here looks like. Looking like it's getting pretty seared there. I said we got about another minute or two. I did five minutes on the one side, and it'll be about five minutes on the other side as well, and then we'll pop it in the oven. Here we are in the oven. I did use the lid um, from everything I could find online. It was temperature safe for up to 400, 500 degrees. I did reach out to the company, haven't heard back, but I felt as though it was safe. And I had my temperature probe hooked in. I got a few degrees left before I reached an internal temperature of 150, and then we'll let it rest. We just beeped. I ended up changing things just a little bit. I went to uh, 155 instead of 150 just because the people are going to be eating it like it a little more done. And so my temperature has beeped. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it off of here and then I'm going to let it rest in about 5-10 minutes. We'll cut it. I thought it was only appropriate after cooking in this pan on the stovetop and then in the oven i washed the pan now i'm going to cut this in the pan so we'll see how it hands handles this knife and we get to take a look at our steak hopefully it's cooked medium and i think that's pretty good it's a light pink which is what most people like let's see what we did to our our pan you know what i actually i might see a little scratch right there in the pan after I clean this up, I'll get a close-up just to make sure. I tell you what, that was some of the best steak I've ever had. And yes, I did try some of it. Even though I cooked it a little more than I would have liked it, it was still delicious. I was like, man, I'm going to do this more often. But did you sense a disturbance in the force when I cut the knife on it? Let's see if it did any damage. All right, so after cooking it, I did notice, and you can see it in the reflection, there's some discoloration here, and I scrubbed this pretty well. Um, I don't have an SOS pad, but I scrubbed it, and this I just could not get off. Also, it's hard to see in an angle, um, but I did scratch it. I couldn't believe it. I thought maybe it was the oil, and actually that's what I was hoping for, but I did scratch it. Now what I'll do is I'll show a picture of it because it's really hard to focus in on the camera because of um, the pattern here. With the hex clad but just letting you know it does clean up well expect some of this discoloration and do not cut on it with a knife
because it will scratch. In this review, we've been looking at the Hexclad 12 inch fry pan that I purchased for $130. I do think it's important to note that this is PFOA free. And I know that's important to a lot of people because they want to keep those chemicals and stuff away from their cookware. They do say this is oven safe up to 500 degrees. It is dishwasher safe, although myself, I prefer to wash it by hand. Um, after you wash it, you may have to re-season it in order to keep it that non-stick and just keep the pan healthy and such. They do say that it is scratch resistant, and I would say that to a point. If you're cutting on this, not so much. Like I used the pizza cutter, I didn't notice any cuts, but when I cut it with a knife, I could see the cut. So I'll just be careful on that. It is a decent pan. It's heavyweight. It's nice. It cooks well. Um, it's definitely a pan that I'm going to look forward to using. Plus, it replaces this hunk of junk that I've used for years. Um, so for me, this is a step up. If you like this um, pan, I am going to leave a link in the description uh, to Amazon. So if you want to be interested in getting one of these, you can click on that. They also have woks and tenant fry pans. And I'll just leave a bunch of links down there. If you're interested, it'll be down there. This was Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of the Hexclad 12-inch fry pan. Did you notice what I switched back here? Of course you did. Not too long ago, I did a review of this. This is the Copper Chef Black Diamond 10-inch fry pan. Um, and this is the one I use on a typical basis, and for me, it's held up pretty well. That being said, I, do, I don't wash it in the dishwasher, and I season it frequently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link the review for this video right up here. So make sure you're logged in so you can see this rectangle and click on this link for that review. I'll meet you over there. Go ahead, click it. It's safe. I promise.